Well, on Friday, Great Britain left the EU and the stock market dropped 600 points. Are you worried? All right then. Come January, Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump will be our next president. Are you worried now? Don't be worried, because in the end, we win. And we win no matter what happens in this world. We win because of determination. And it's not our determination. It's the determination of Jesus Christ that he showed in carrying out God's will. Merriam-Webster's new International Dictionary defines the word determination as the firm or fixed intention to achieve a desired end. The Gospel of John records over and over again Jesus declaring that he was determined to do his Father's will. After speaking to the woman at the well and completing a long journey, the disciples in chapter 4, in John chapter 4, urged him to eat. Jesus' reply was this, Truly food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. In chapter 6, Jesus told the people gathered around him, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Even as Jesus knew the end was approaching, his determination to carry out his father's will never wavered. John chapter 18 details the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. Judas, along with a detachment of troops and officers carrying lanterns, torches, and weapons, sought out Jesus in the garden. The Gospels of Matthew and Mark confirm this and add that the soldiers numbered a great multitude. When Jesus asked them, who are you looking for? Their response was Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus knew that in order to carry out his Father's will, there could only be one response. He simply said, I am he. When he said that, they all drew back and fell to the ground. That was his chance. If he wanted out, it was then. But the odds were overwhelmingly in Jesus' favor, but still, he was determined to do his Father's will. He allowed them to capture him. John chapter 18, verse 4 is a revealing verse. Jesus already knew all the things that would come upon him, all things. He knew from the beginning about the blasphemies, the scourging, the nails, the crown of thorns, the spear, and the cross that were ahead of him. He'd already suffered the curses, insults, and the indignities rained down upon him by a hateful world. But he was determined to do his Father's will, to be crucified as the Lamb of God. The betrayal of Judas was no surprise. He knew all things that would come upon him, and he would see it through until the end. There are two words in the fourth verse that remind us of Jesus' determination. Went forward. He went forward. He went forward to meet the approaching army, and he went forward to fulfill his Father's plan for the redemption of man. It was as if he desired to be face to face with those who would lead him to his death. No fear, no regret, no hiding, no turning back. The perfect, sinless, righteous one went forward, determined to die for us. When Peter attempted to intervene on Christ's behalf by drawing a sword and cutting off the right ear of Malchus, Jesus objected and asked the one who would soon deny him three times, Shall I not drink the cup which my Father has given me? This was the cup that he told James and John about all the way back in Mark 10, that he was determined to drink. This was the cup that in Luke 22 he prayed to his father would be taken away from him. It was the cup of his death. But from the beginning, he was determined to drink from the cup because it was the will of his father. Jesus was sent to earth to die on a cross so that we could all be free from sin. Today, as we partake of the bread and we drink from the cup, let's remember this. We don't have to worry that, about the rumblings and machinations of this world. The determination of Jesus Christ to carry out his Father's will ensures that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the grace which you have for us and ask that you would give us strength and courage to show us the same kind of grace to others around us. 
Please be patient with us, Lord, for we are imperfect, and we live in an imperfect world which gives us many opportunities to fail you. We're so grateful for your word which strengthens us and for this congregation and the fellowship and strength that provides to support us. In your name we pray, amen. <laughs>